So I've just arrived at uh, Hickling Broad. We're going to be looking out for some wildlife. Behind me, we've got three of my mates here. We've got uh, Liam and Graham, who you've seen before in some videos. We've also got JP, who uh, I've met for the first time today. I'll leave all of our links in the description. Let's go see some wildlife. Hickling Broad is the largest of the Norfolk Broads, situated on the Upper Thurne River system. It was actually the site of my first ever wildlife walk video back in July 2019, and incredibly, this is my first time back to Hickling since that first video. The Four of Us Nature YouTubers had arrived fairly early, just as the sun was beginning to burn off the morning mists and the bushes were filled with dew covered cobwebs. These all beaver webs truly are works of art. What's the uh, collective term for YouTubers? Is it uh, an influence? Well, we might not be all that influential, but even this early in the morning we could feel the influence of the sun. Today it was going to be very hot. We arrived at the first viewpoint, and through the trees a couple of birds caught my eyes. This little egret, once a rare visitor to this country, they are now a common sight. The little egret is a small white heron, and speaking of herons, you can also see the larger grey heron. With 1.8 metre wingspan, these are large birds. They are often seen wading through shallow water or standing incredibly still, waiting for its prey to swim past. We were off to a great start with the wildlife, but it wouldn't continue like this. There is a saying, only mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. It was to prove right. As the sun rose in the sky and the temperatures climbed, most of the wildlife sought out shelter and disappeared from sight. Still, there were sights to be seen. Insects were out in force, including these butterflies, this red admiral, and this comma. It wasn't just insects. Out in the distance was another egret. This time it was the great egret. This egret is larger than this little relative we saw earlier. It's also rarer, although it's a much more common sight than it used to be. A few decades ago, sightings of the great egret were less than annual, but they can now be seen all over the UK and even began to breed for the first time in Somerset in 2012. We've finally found some shade, but it hasn't really done much to relieve the heat. This is a stark contrast to the last video in Snettersham when it just wouldn't stop raining. This is a completely different day. Oh, and it's a scorcher. Another viewpoint initially gave me some nice views of a herd of cattle, used here at Hickling for managed grazing. But as I was filming, Graham alerted us to a site we had hoped to witness today. But that crane's over there. A flock of cranes flying across the sky. Cranes were once so common in Britain that at a banquet for the Archbishop of York in 1465, 204 cranes were roasted and served. But due to hunting and draining of marshland, they disappeared as a breeding bird about 400 years ago. That was until 1979, when three migrating birds were blown off course and ended up in Norfolk. These days, after careful protection and reintroductions and habitat restoration, there are now around 160 cranes in Britain, about 30 or 40 of which just flew past us. As quickly as they arrived, they had gone, and so we moved on too. Next to this stunning field of sunflowers, through the heat haze, you can see a flock of lapwing. The lapwing, also known as a peewit due to its piercing call, are familiar birds of farmlands and wetlands. From a distance, these birds look black and white, but if my camera had a more powerful zoom lens, you'd see some amazing colours. The back of these birds has an iridescent green and purple sheen. The lapwing used to breed over much of lowland Britain, but changes in land management and increased predation pressure has seen a reduction in the number of breeding locations, and this bird is becoming an increasingly uncommon sight. Their populations appear to have decreased by 59% between 1967 and 2020. Throughout the day, we were all astonished at just how many dragonflies were on the wing. Wherever you looked, there were hundreds of them. One of the more common species we could see were these common darters. This one is probably a female, or possibly a juvenile. I'm not good enough at Dragonfly ID to be confident. The males tend to be a more reddish colour. The common darter is also easily confused with the ruddy darter. The males of the ruddy darter have a more club-shaped abdomen. This mating pair are possibly ruddy darters, but I'm not 100% sure. 
Another way to tell is by looking at the legs. The common data has pale stripes on the legs, but I'd need to get a closer look to be sure on this one. Another dragonfly on offer today was this male migrant hawker. There are several similar looking hawker species, but the brown coster and the yellow golf tee shaped marking near the top of his abdomen hinted that this was a migrant. Liam was the lucky one who got a very up close and personal encounter with one of the dart dragonflies when one landed on his head, much to our amusement. Well, the dragonfly moved on, and so must we. There are several very hot hides to check out. Unfortunately, most of the views we got looked like this. Pretty empty of wildlife. Oh, just uh, had a little sit down, had some lunch, sitting in this uh, shade of the hide. We struck out on the wildlife, there's nothing out there at the moment, so we're moving on. Hopefully we'll see something else in the next one. Well, once again, another hide, beautiful view, but not a lot of wildlife on offer, so we're going to move on uh, to the next one. Hopefully we'll see some birds there. You may think from the footage I've shown so far that there was plenty about, but what I've shown you are some very condensed highlights of what turned out to be a mostly empty day. But that's how it is sometimes. If you want to guarantee yourself sightings of animals, you're better off going to the zoo. But out here at nature reserves, when you do see the wildlife, it's a real treat. Here's some better views of the little egret that we saw earlier. One charming sight was this juvenile goldfinch, possibly begging for food from the adult who was having none of it. The last wildlife sighting of the day was this hornet's nest in one of the reserve's bins near the reception. It had been taped up and warning signs placed on it, but unlike the scare stories you often read in the tabloids, European hornets aren't especially aggressive, less so than the common wasp, and if you don't bother them, they're unlikely to bother you. We were able to get very close to the nest and film them without any bother at all. I think these hornets are a beautiful insect with a rich yellow colour. They're an important pollinator, and they predate on species that feed on plants and crops, so they can be very beneficial to gardeners. Well, we've made our way around the Hickling Broad. Uh, been a little bit of a washout for wildlife. You know, I've seen a few things, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. You can't always guarantee what you're going to see sometimes. You just have to enjoy the day, enjoy the weather, if you can go over the heat. Um, and just uh, take what you can get uh, when you can get it. And, you know, you still have a really good time. Still saw one or two little things here and there, which obviously you'll have seen in the video, uh, but that's just how it goes sometimes. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Please do leave a comment down below if you uh, have anything to say. Always enjoy reading your comments, and hopefully I will see you very soon in the next nature video. I'll see you then. Goodbye. Of course, don't forget to check out Liam, Graham and JP. The links to their channels will be in the description. So once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.